Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for a cantilever beam which is subjected to point load and uniformly distributed loads. Let me read the problem. A cantilever of 14 meter span carries loads of 6 kN, 4 kN, 6 kN and 4 kN at 2 meter, 4 meter, 7 meter and 14 meter respectively from the fixed edge. It also has a uniformly distributed load of 2 kN per meter run for the length between 4 meter and 10 meter from the fixed end. Draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. First, let us construct the configuration diagram of the given cantilever beam. So, the cantilever beam measures a length of 14 meter. It carries loads of 6 kN at a distance of 2 meter from the fixed end. So, this 6 kN load is located at a distance of 2 meter from the fixed end. The next point load 4 kN is located at a distance of 4 meter from the fixed end. So, the next 4 kN point load is located at a distance of 4 meter from the fixed end. The third load is 6 kN. It is located at a distance of 7 meter from the fixed end. So, this point load 6 kN is located there at a distance of 7 meter from the fixed end. And the next load is 4 kN and it is located at a distance of 14 meter from the fixed end. So, here this is the 4 kN load and it is located at a distance of 14 meter from the fixed end. We got a uniformly distributed load 2 kN meter runs for the length between 4 meter and 10 meter. And this is a 4 meter length and this is the 10 meter length. So, in between these two points, we have a uniformly distributed load of 2 kN per meter. Uh, let us mark the points where we are going to find out the shear force and bending moment values. The first one is this fixed end, point A, and second one B represents the point where the point load is acting and the next point is C here also there is a point load and the next point is D here also there is a point load and at the end of UDL we got an another point that is point E so we have to remember that wherever there is a point load there we have to consider a point to determine the shear force and bending moment values similarly if there is a uniformly distributed load and then at the starting as well as at the ending there must be a point where we have to calculate the shear force and bending moment value. And the next point F which represents the point load for kilo newton. So now let us find out the distance between these individual loads. So between B and C it is 4 minus 4 it is 2 meter and between C and D it is 7 minus 4 it is 3 meter. And between B and E, it is 10 minus 7, it is 3 meter. And between E and F, it is 14 minus 10, it is 4 meter. So now we are going to convert this UDL into point load. Because we cannot solve the problem by keeping UDL as it is. So what we have to do is, we have to convert this UDL into equivalent point load. So in this problem, we have a point load which is acting in between the UDL. See, if there is a point load that is acting in between UDL, then we have to split the UDL into two different elements. So, here we are going to split this UDL into two different elements in such a way that one from C to D, another from D to E. So, first consider the section B to E. So, here the equivalent point load is magnitude of the UDL multiplied by the distance on which it is acting that is 3 meters so it is 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 kN and then we have to calculate the equivalent point load for the UDL which is acting over the section CD so it is also 2 multiplied by 3 6 kN because 2 is the magnitude of this UDL and 3 is the length on which the UDL is acting so it is 6 so now we have replaced this UDL with equivalent point load. Now let us calculate the shear 
force. The shear force at a point of cut, a section means sum of all the forces on the right side of the cut. So here along this beam, F to A, wherever we make a cut, we have considered the load acting on the right side of the section. Then how to find out the sign convention of the shear force. So let us consider a section here between E and F. Consider a section E between E and F and we make a cut. And here you see there is a load which is acting on the right side and which is both the load. And this is the resultant for this section. So here this is considered as positive because on the right of the cut, if the resultant force is moving in the downwards direction, it is considered as positive. Whereas when you make a cut, the resultant force is directed towards the upward direction, then it is considered as negative. And this is the sign convention for the shear forces. So as far as the given problem is concerned, here a cantilever beam is subjected to point loads and uniformly distributed load. And all the loads are directed towards the downward direction. So wherever you make a cut, then on the right side, you will get the resultant force which is directed towards downward direction. So always, as far as this problem is concerned, the shear loads are considered as positive. And then when you calculate the shear force value, we are moving from this right end to left end, that is from F to A. So this is the procedure we follow. So now let us calculate the shear forces. So at point F, we have a point load. Whereas there is no load on the right side of this point F. So wherever there is a point load, we consider two points to represent that particular section. Because one represents the load which is on the right side. There is no uh, shear load, so it is zero kilonewton. And the second one represents point exactly on which the shear load is acting. It is zero plus four kilonewton, and it is four kilonewton. And then let us move on to the point E. So when you make a cut here, point E, let us see. Here there is no point load is acting, so we have to consider only one point. So wherever there is a point load, there only we have to consider two points. Here there is no point load, so it is F E. At this point, the same load which we consider at point two of F is carried forward. That means there is no other point load other than this four kilonewton. So this load is carried forward to the this section. So the shear load at section E is 4 kilonewton. Now let us calculate the shear load at D. So here you see on the right side of the D, there are two loads. One is this point load, another one is this load due to the UDL. And also we have gotten point load which is acting exactly at D. So here also we have to consider two points. One is the FD1 and another one is the FD2. So FD1 is the existing load is 4 kN and also we have gotten another load is 6 kN due to the UDL so we have to add that also so 4 plus 6 which is 10 kN and exactly at point D there is a point load which comes into picture so yet P2 is is 10 kN plus 6 kN so it is 16 kN so now let us move to the point C so here also See, there is a point load. So we have to consider two points. One is FC1 and another one is FC2. So FC1, consider only the forces of the right side of the section C. So FC1 is here, we got already a 16 kN load at point FD2. So another point load due to the UDL is also to be considered with that load. So which is 16 plus this load, 6 kN, and which is 22 kN. And at point C, uh, we have another point load, so we have to consider that also for the point FC2. So 22 plus 4, and it is 26 kilo newton. And then let us move to the point B. So here also a point load is acting. So FB1 is calculated by considering the load which is acting on the right side of the section B. So FB1 is the the same load that is 26 kN which is acting at a point FC2 which is carried forward to this point also because there is no load in between B and C. 
So the same load is carried forward. And that point B, there is an another point load, which is 6 kN. So the FB2 is calculated by adding this 6 kN with that 26 kN. So it is 32 kN. And now let us move to the point A. So here you see there is no load in between A and B. So also there is no point load at A. So it is the FPA which is calculated by considering the loads which are acting on the right side. So the FP2 is carried forward here, that is 32 kN. So now we have calculated all the shear load which are acting at the point A, B, C, D, E, F. Now let us draw the shear force diagram. Okay. So as you see here, all the shear force values are positive. So we consider here reference point at the extreme bottom of this available space. So here you see this A, B, C, E, E, F. Now let us mark the points. First one is F of 1 which is 0 and F of 2 4 kN and F E value is 4 kN and F T 1 is 10 kN and F T 2 is 16 kN and F C 1 is 22 kN and F C 2 is 26 kN and F B 1 is 26 kN and FB2 is 32 kN and the FA value is 32 kN. So now we are going to connect these points with the straight lines. Okay. So first from FF1 to FF2 and FB, FB1, FB2, FC1, FC2, FB1, FB2, FB2, FC1, FC2, FB1, FB2, FA. So this is the shear force diagram for the given cantilever P. So you can visualize vertical line wherever there is a point load is acting. So here you see at point F there is a vertical line and at D there is a vertical line and at C there is a vertical line and at B there is a vertical line and the UDL is exactly represented as a this kind of slanting lines because here the load is increasing between C and B as well as C and D e, there is a inclined load because the load is gradually increasing when it moves from right to left. Now, let us see how to find out the bending moment for the cantilever beam. So, bending moment at a section of the beam is algebraic sum of the moments about the section of the, all the poses on the right side of the section. And here, we calculate the algebraic sum of the moments about the section of all the forces acting on the right side of the section. So, the sign convention here is when the load which try to bend the beam like this, then it try to rotate the beam in the counter clockwise direction. So the sign convention here is positive because the moment on the right portion is counter clockwise direction. So it create a concavity upwards. We also call this as a sagging bending moment. And then the other sign convention is if the bending moment is in the clockwise direction then we consider this as a negative so here you can see that there is a convexity upwards we also call this as a hogging bending so as far as this problem is concerned you see all the loads are packed towards downwards direction so whenever you make a cut or a section and the load on the right side which causes the hogging bending moment so bending moment is always negative as far as this problem is concerned now let us calculate the bending moment value. So first at point F there is no force on the right side so it's going to be 0 kN meter and at point E there is a point load 4 kN so it creates a moment 4 multiplied by 4 meter and it is minus 16 kN meter and at point D so there are two loads one is this point load due to UDL and another one is this point load so 4 multiplied by 7 minus this load 6 multiplied by 1.5 meter. So it is minus 37 kN meter. Since all the uh, moments are considered as negative, we put minus sign before all the moments which we calculate. And then at point C, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 loads. The first load is 4 kN, 4 multiplied by this distance is. 10 meter between C and F and then this load 6 kN multiplied by 4.5 meter 
between these two points and then between this and this that is 3 meters so 6 multiplied by 3 and 6 multiplied by 1.5 meter so the total uh, moment is minus 94 kilonewton meter and then at point B uh, let us calculate the moments first one is 4 multiplied by this distance 12 and 6 multiplied by 6.5 okay so since it is 1.5 3 plus 1.5 plus 4 so it is 6.5 and 6 multiplied by 5 and uh, 6 multiplied by 3.5 and 4 multiplied by 2 and the total moment is minus 146 kilonewton meter and at point A so we have to consider the all the loads that is 4 multiplied by 14 meter that is the length of the span and then 6 multiplied by 8.5 meter and 6 multiplied by 7 meter and 6 multiplied by 5.5 meter and 4 multiplied by 4 meter and 6 multiplied by 2 meter so the total bending moment is 210 kilonewton meter now let us draw the bending moment diagram so since all the bending moment that we have calculated are negative we consider the reference line the top of the available space so this is the reference line we let us mark the point a b e f so now let us mark these bending moment values in this graph first one at f it is 0 kilonewton meter and at e it is minus 16 kilonewton meter and at d it is minus 37 kilonewton meter and at c it is minus 94 kilonewton meter and at b it is minus 146 kilonewton meter and at point a it is minus 210 kilonewton meter now let us connect these points so we have to be aware of what kind of lines we have to draw between these point loads and between this UDL. So between E and F moment is due to the point load so it has to be connected with the straight line and then between E and D the moment happened because of this uniformly distributed loads and it has to be connected with the parabolic curve and between C and D also it has to be connected with the parabolic curve and between B and C it is straight line because there is this point loads and between A and B also it is point loads so this is the bending moment diagram so here so these are parabolic curves and these are straight lines so between point loads you have to use the straight line for connecting these values and between points where the uniformly distributed load is acting you have to use the parabolic curve so the bending moment uh, diagram represents the variation of bending moment along the beam. So I hope you have all understood the concept of shear force and bending moments. As well as we have also drawn the shear force and bending moment diagram or the cantilever beam which is subjected to point load as well as UDL. Here the interesting thing is there is a point load which is in between and UDL. Thank you for watching my lecture.